What's going on, family? This is Ezekiel and Will, and you are now watching the Soul Detox Show. Listen, our mission is to replace the toxic with the truth. And since you're here, we ask that you like and share this video, subscribe to this channel, because your engagement tells the algorithm to push this message out to more people. Thank you to everyone who's financially supporting the show. Because of your investment, we're creating more opportunities to detox your soul. is that what you think is protecting you and preserving you is actually keeping your brokenness alive. Unforgiveness is actually the grave that Satan desires to bury your freedom in. And we think that holding on to unforgiveness puts us in a position of power because many of us, when we've been offended, it causes us to feel like we've been wrong. Something has been taken away. We've yeah. been put in a position of weakness and defenselessness. Yeah. And so when we hold on to unforgiveness, it causes us to feel like we're in power. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see all of the things that I'm expecting God to do in order to extract vengeance because vengeance is yours, God. So of course, if you're saying that vengeance is yours, then obviously what you're going to do is extract vengeance on the person. Well, not necessarily if I know scripture. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. For the Bible says that we wrestle not with flesh and blood, on, bro. but with angels and principalities and rulers of darkness and in high places, spiritual wickedness in high places. So if we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, if we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, Oh my. Why do we want God what? to wrestle oh with flesh and blood? My God. If we who are flesh and blood don't even wrestle with flesh and blood. <laughs> I never thought about Why that. do we want God who is a spirit to wrestle with flesh and blood? Because the truth of the matter is God could be extracting vengeance on the spirit that arrested the person who abused you. So him extracting vengeance could be that when he presented them with an opportunity to cut it off, that the eye that needed to be plucked out and they said, okay, God, I, I realized that I was wrong. I realized I don't want to be this way and I'm going to pluck this out. I don't want to be this way. And God heals and delivers them. And now they come back a different person. Could that be that he extracted the vengeance that he set out to extract? Being that we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Oh, my. see, we want the actual physical eye to be plucked out. I want oh. to see you come back with an eye patch. I want to see you come back with a missing arm because then that would make me feel better. Oh, my God. Because I could see what God did to you. Mm. I could see that God got you back. This is how I can tell where our proximity is to God. Because if I get closer to him and he starts to challenge my perspective, I start to see that every single day I deserve to be cut off. Oh, my gosh. Every day. You said as you get closer to God, he begins to challenge your perspective. Yeah. That sounds like going from dark to light. Yeah. When Jesus called Lazarus out of the grave, he yes. didn't just call him from death to life. He called him from dark to light. Mm. And perspective is always challenged from dark to light. Yeah. And I realized that for those who are still wallowing in unforgiveness, this is your moment. God wants to set you free. He yeah. wants to free you from the grave of unforgiveness and he wants to take you into light. And what happens is when you operate in that grave, just like in the same passage in Matthew chapter 18, yeah. we see the parable of the merciless servant yeah. who was forgiven much and he caught his servant slipping who had owed him a little Run and him him by neck, the neck by the and said, neck. give me everything. <laughs> give me everything. Run them King heard about it. And he said, I'm going to throw you in prison and you can't come out until you yeah. pay everything. And he can't pay everything. So he in there into the outer darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yes. So the reward, hmm, the reward of ruminating in the darkness is to be cast into the darkness mm. later on. The, the reward and the, the what comes forth out of 
holding on to bitterness, grudges, and unforgiveness is the inability to see the hand of mercy on your life. Yeah. How, how is it possible that this guy just got released? Yeah. He had his release date. Boy, should have been happy. And like you said, on high with the gratitude of the mercy of God that has been poured out on his life. But the thing about offense is it's a blinder. Yeah. The thing about graves is that they're dark. Mm. And so I can't see God's mercy. Yeah. I can't get, I can't see the personality, the characteristics of God while yeah. I'm sitting here in the dark. And so offense will always, how I feel will always be king. Because I can't see what God is trying to show me. I can't see his mercies that are new every morning. So if you're in this situation and you just can't get over the bitterness, simultaneously, you cannot see God's mercy. Yeah. You can't, it's impossible for you to see the beauty of God's mercy because if you did, if you saw God's mercy, then simultaneously you'll recognize the weight of your own trespasses that were mercy is a withholding of deserved punishment. Yeah. You'll recognize what you deserved. Yeah. And if you realize what you deserve, then you never take on the, 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 the personality or the position of, I didn't deserve this. Mm. How could they? What me? No, your, your perspective is just, Oh, Gosh, me a recipient of such mercy, me such a res- that's you're consumed with it. Your eyes are are so yeah. clear that when when people when people tap you, just like man, I have to let that slide. I gotta tell my I gotta tell this little story, bro. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> this little story, man. Of when I was letting everybody slide after they was hitting my car. Yeah, bro. This is when I was in the hood, so I still had a little bit of hood in me, <laughs> bro. I, I had I had a I think I had my Camaro at the time, mm-hmm. bro. I had an old lady hit my car, and at that time I thought back to when I hit somebody else's car and I dipped off the block and I didn't do nothing about it. I was like, yeah. I gotta let it slide because yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You know? <laughs> All right, I did that to somebody. She did to me. I'm gonna let it slide. So it evens out. Yeah, it evens it's out. It's a balance of scale. Somebody yeah. else hit me. Another yeah. dent. I'm like, okay, I, I got you, bro. <laughs> okay, okay. I feel you. All I right. see you. But my Camaro, man, this is supposed to be cute, man. I'm about to be, yeah. you know, the girl's supposed to be liking this car. Um, and then a third person hit my car. And I was like, nah. No, no. <laughs> Today, I'm not going to let this slide. Yeah. Bro, I jumped out my car. I opened his car door. I told him to get up out the car. I said, you just hit my car. I need your insurance. Let's take care of this right now. The dude barely speak English. He's like, oh, no. I saw this. Uh, y'all, forgive me of this accent, y'all. Yeah. He said, oh, no, sorry. Uh, no no insurance. I said, okay. All right. See, I'm not mm-hmm. about to let you slide like no, this. I was like, no. you in my hood. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, cool. Call somebody. Call your sister. Call your mama. Call somebody because... I'm going to need to take your car if you can't come up with nothing. I need them to give give me the money to pay for this car. He yeah. said, nobody, no nothing, nobody, no nothing. I said, okay, for sure. Give me the keys. He was like, uh, no, what do you want? I said, give me your keys. I'm taking this, this car. is mine. And he was like, um, esta mi, mi casa. I said, what? He said, esta mi casa. And I knew a little Spanish, and he was like, this is my house. I was like, you're not about to scam me, yeah, Brody. Yeah, yeah. You're not about to scam me. I was like, prove it. He went to the front of the car, and he showed me how everything was kind of laid out. It was a blanket. He had a toothbrush, and he literally was living out of his car. And I was kind of like, okay, whatever, but I'm going to still need something. He interrupted me, and he was like, um, a compromiso, excuse me. Um, are you Christian? I Ooh. said, what? <laughs> he said, you Christian? I said, yeah. He said, um, mi hermano, he my brother. Oh, come on. The disgust with myself that I felt. In that moment, I realized that that mercy I was unwilling to release to him 
God had poured it out on me so many times. And I saw a picture of myself so clearly Jesus, that all it took was one person that just crossed me again. Oh my God. And so many people are in that position where you let it slide before. You've been offended. You've been lied to before, but you've positioned yourself with a posture that said, if anybody crossed me, and that's your position of protecting yourself. You've built these walls to protect yourself, to make sure that nobody's going to deal with you like they deal with, dealt with you before. You want to look out for yourself. But I put, I, I'll put, put this before you. If you take God's position to protect you, then you open yourself up for the grave that's waiting for you. Oh, my God. There is no other option. God is saying, let me handle it. Let me deal with this, because if you want to deal with this on your own, then you also have to handle what comes with it, because with my wrath comes a death. Bro, scripture, just to that point, John 13 and 15 says, for I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Jesus, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, <laughs> but the scripture will be fulfilled. Creating this space of knowing, bro, when he said, are you a Christian? Oh my gosh. I gave you the example. It talks about truly, they will know you by your love. They will know you. I wonder, I wonder if people are limited in their ability to come to Christ. Jesus. Because we are refusing to step into the place that God has called us to dwell, Jesus. which is in forgiveness. The scripture says, if, well, if he slaps you, that you give him the other cheek. What? Well, what? I'm not, let somebody slap me. What? You said dwell. That means we got to live there. I got to live in unforgiveness? Well, if I'm going to live in a place where I'm receiving forgiveness, then I have to live in a place where I'm extending forgiveness. Oh, my God. Because the two are tied together. Oh. God. So then it becomes more so of I have to forgive because what I can't do, oh Jesus, I can't allow you to offend me or abuse me and to limit me from accessing forgiveness. I can't give you that much power because what you said was, is that then we think that unforgiveness empowers us when what it, when, of, when what unforgiveness does is empowers the person who you are holding the unforgiveness against because then they are holding you back from experiencing and receiving the forgiveness Jesus. that you need. Oh my gosh. So I have to forgive because you can't disrespect me and you can't oh hit my gosh. car. You can't do all of these things and keep me from accessing forgiveness. I'm giving you all the power. How do I get back my power? How do I get it's back good. to it's the good. place where I step back into my power? It's good. I forgive you. Ooh. Because when I forgive you, what I do is I release you. And I release me from being bound to you. Because unforgiveness does not set me free. It keeps me bound to the last time that I was broken. Oh, my God. So the unforgiveness now keeps me in a place where I'm still connected to it. Wow. Jesus, how many times shall I forgive? 70, 70 times. times seven. Same passage. 70 times seven. Well, so, so I need to count. Okay, Eve, so I'm going to keep track. Oh, okay, this one, this one, I'm going to keep track. Why are you giving me that number? Because I realized by the time you get to 70 times seven, you lost count. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I just got to keep forgiving? Do you want to keep getting forgiven? So, so you telling me when they lie on me, oh my God, I gotta keep forgiving them. Jesus. Didn't you tell me that you would never do that again? 
<laughs> so, so you're telling me when they disrespect me, I got to bite my tongue? Well, when I told you not to do that and you did it anyway and it was disrespectful, did I withhold mine? How are we in this place now where we're saying, God, I'm so angry, I'm so hurt, and, and we keep now elevating our pain oh my. over who God is and his sovereignty. Oh, my God. Because now I then make my hurt my God. Oh. Now I make my pain my God. Oh, my God. I am gosh. being discipled by my emotional breach, and I am now causing my 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 trauma to become become an idol and your god will teach you how to live he'll teach you how to speak oh you think oh that's just how i am no pain taught you that oh come on no that's just how i think no pain taught you that <sighs> oh that's just how i love no pain taught you that <sighs> far be it from me <sighs> that oh it makes me want tears are coming to my eyes that what happened to me in 2011 yeah. is now te- is my schoolmaster. It now teaches me how to live. It now is the God that I look to. If we're made in the image of God, then everything that we make God, we are now made in the image of. Yeah. And so if I'm walking and being led by pain, I'm I'm conforming to the image of pain. Jesus. And so we think we escape pain and its attributes. When we go into another relationship, no, I drag that image there. Yeah. Oh my God. I drag the image of my hurt, my pain, my disappointment into my next situation when I refuse to release it. Oh my gosh. By giving gratitude for the forgiveness that I'm experiencing by extending it. The way I say thank you to God is by giving. (laughs) Glory be to God. The way that I say thank Thank you you. is by giving. And I can't give God the mercy and the forgiveness because he doesn't need it. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing that he's done that requires forgiveness. Come on. So in order for me to say thank you, for forgiveness, I gotta give it. Because if I can't, for, if I can't give it, then I can't receive it. And then this is when we come in that place now, where we become unstable in our perspective, because that we have an instability. Because on one end, we're thinking that we're experiencing God's forgiveness, and we are expecting God to forgive us because of what Christ did. But on the other hand, now. There's this instability here because I don't feel the need to forgive them, even though Christ forgave me. So I'm going to God saying, okay, God, still give me the forgiveness that I need, even though I can't extend it. So my thank you to you for you giving me forgiveness is to spit on the forgiveness that you've given me. Oh, my gosh. And I know it's hard, but this is where we grow up. This is where we grow up because the culture's narrative has taught us that you got to get back, that you got to get it out, out, out the mud, that you it's, you don't let nobody walk over you, that you got to get them back. Don't let them do that to you. You got to turn around. You got to protect you when in all actuality is if I come into the fullness of knowing that those that name the name of Christ mm. shall suffer persecution. Oh, my God. Then I'm expecting it. Jesus. I'm expecting you to lie on me. Why? Because they lied on Jesus. Jesus. I'm expecting you to abuse me. Why? Because they abused Jesus. I'm expecting it. Now, it doesn't make it right for someone to take your your innocence, for someone to to take to claim the things that they uh, that God gave you. That does not make it right. But you holding on to this unforgiveness is keeping you stuck and connected to the person that did that to you. And if you can't release it, if you can't release it, then what you do, unforgiveness is this mechanism that we cause uh, uh, that we think is a protective shield. Yeah. So you broke me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on to these broken pieces. And as I'm holding on to these broken pieces, I now shut off the access point for God to come in and first heal. 
but then also for him to replace and restore and renew. <laughs> so my forgiveness is the access. Forgiveness is the gateway for, for forgiveness to flow in my life and for healing to flow in my life. <laughs> and here's the truth. Forgiveness is like healing. It's a process. Jesus. There's going to be some times where you got to wake up every day and forgive. Mm. Some of you need to wake up every day and forgive you. Wow. Because you keep staring at yourself and you're stuck in this mirror. And only thing that you keep seeing is what you did, is what you didn't do. If you may be on the, on the opposite end of the spectrum where you're riddled by guilt by the offense that you created, by the things that you've done, for the offense that you created against God. And you keep beating yourself up. And you may be at a space where you keep gotta going back to the mirror to forgive you day in and day out. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. God, Holy Spirit, help me to forgive me. Holy Spirit, help me to forgive them. Because here's the thing. Forgiveness is a spiritual act. It is not a natural one. Forgiveness is not something that can be done in the conscience. It can only be done in the spirit. Jesus. This is how God extends forgiveness for he himself is spirit. And, and when he forgives us, he gives us, he brings us back into right standing with him. And it is a spiritual act. So I can't do it in my own power. That's good, bro. I can only extend it by relying on the power, leaning into Holy Spirit. And I had to take, listen to me, I had to take all my anger, my frustration, my bitterness to God to say, God, I'm going to be very honest with you. Come on. I don't want to let this go. I'm mad. And you keep telling me not to say nothing, but I, they talking a whole lot. You keep telling me, just, 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 just trust me. And I'm like, God, but, but, but this hurts. And my faith, my fists were clenched. And it wasn't until I, I went to God and started saying, God, this hurts. And I'm holding on to it, but I don't want it no more. Oh my gosh. So help me. Help me to walk out this, this forgiveness thing. Because I don't want this to limit my ability to receive the forgiveness that I so desperately need. Because when I start thinking about the times that I broke your heart. Jesus. The times that I abused your mercy and grace, the times that I heard you calling me and I went the other way, the times where I knew exactly what I was doing was wrong. Mm. And every time I came back, you were like the father who yeah. welcomed the prodigal son home. Not only did you meet me with open arms, but you ran out to meet me. Even when I was uh, reeking with stench, you wrapped your arms around me. You threw a robe on me. You, you put a ring on me and you kissed me when I was dirty. You loved me when I was unfaithful. When I have a clear concept of God's forgiveness, then I can now open up to, to the power of the Holy Spirit. See, when, when the Spirit fell in Acts 2, we think that that is power just to tread upon serpents. No, that he is giving us Holy Spirit is the power to forgive. Yes. It's the power to release. Power. I can't do it on my own power. It's the power to let go. So I got to receive Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come inside of me and give me the power to let this go. Jesus. Because it keeps digging a grave that I can't get out of. Mm. And the enemy is content with me holding on to unforgiveness because he knows that if I hold on to unforgiveness, I am limiting my ability to receive forgiveness. Oh and I know that it's hurt. I know that it has been difficult and I know that you may be carrying some things and there may be anger and pain and that's bubbling up inside of you and tears may be rolling down your face right now. I get it. What I also know is that if you can't get to a place where you can let that go, then the reward of holding on to unforgiveness is to be separate from the Father. So it is now your duty and you don't have to do this here. You can't do it on your own. 
You have to ask Holy Spirit in. And once you ask him in, he will give you the powers to unclench your fist. Because I know how much you want to fight to defend and to get back. But God is saying in this moment that if you give it to me, I'll do what needs to be done. And this is where you trust me to know that whatever needs to be done, I know what needs to be done and I will do that. Thank you, Jesus. But more importantly, if you give that to me, I will replace that in your heart with more forgiveness. I'll give you more grace. I'll give you more mercy. Thank you, Jesus. I'll fill you with my love. Thank you. If you give it to me, I know exactly what to do with it. Thank you. So we're praying now that the power of the Holy Spirit would infiltrate your clenched fists. That everything you are holding on to or may hold on to that the Holy Spirit comes in and begins to cause you to open up those hands. Because while you may be in a fighting position, mm. ready to defend, you are also unable to receive what God wants to release to you in this season. As you open your hands to receive, now you are open and ready for God to give you what he's been trying to give you. I'm praying right now that you will feel the presence of the Holy Spirit to begin to infiltrate every place that tries to keep you bound to the last time you were dropped. I pray right now for your heart, for your mind, Holy Spirit, begin to just allow your power to rest on their thoughts where they have been rehearsing their trauma, rehearsing the, the brokenness, rehearsing the pain. God, give them a new script tonight. Help them to no longer be identified with what happened to them, but help them to be identified with the fact that what happened to them did not break them. Thank you, Jesus. That they are not damaged goods, but overcomers. That they are not wasted and cast aside. That they are not worthless, but they are worthy. Yes. That you call them worthy. That you call them righteous. So we pray for those who are holding on to unforgiveness. Who have an inability to forgive others. And for those who have an inability to forgive themselves. Yes. Holy Spirit, infiltrate the heart. Now, wherever you're watching this, I want you to repeat after me because you may, you may still be saying, I don't know how. You don't have to do the heavy lifting by the confession of your faith. In 1 John, it says that you confess your sins to God, that you may be cleansed. But as you confess your sins one to another, that you may be healed. So as you open your mouth by the confession of your faith, you're going to allow Holy Spirit in to do what you cannot do. So repeat after me. Jesus, I need you. Come into my heart and my mind and help me to release what I've been holding on to. Father, help me to let go of the things that has been holding me captive. I want to receive your freedom tonight. I want to receive your peace right now. I want to make the exchange. My hurt for your redemption. I want to release all the things that I've been carrying and receive 
everything that you have in store. Holy Spirit, give me a heart that forgives and a perspective to know that I must forgive that I might be forgiven. If you prayed that prayer, know now that you've given Holy Spirit access to do what needs to be done and where your strength has failed you in your weakness, his strength is made perfect. So Father God, be with your children tonight. You are little ones that you care so much about. For those who feel that they have been forgotten, remind them that you will never leave them nor forsake them and that your heart is always for them that your spirit would be made known to them even in the midst of their brokenness. Thank you, God, for what you've started here and help them to walk this out day in and day out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.